Kent MP who travelled to Cyprus to seek justice for George Lowe, who was murdered there two years ago, says it's a national disgrace for the whole island that no one has stood trial for the crime. Gareth Johnson's held a series of meetings today with officials to discuss the case. Well, the two main suspects fled to the Turkish-controlled part of Cyprus and were then released. Tonight, the British High Commissioner has told this programme that getting justice for George Lowe is his team's absolute priority. Well, our reporter Amanda Akas is in Cyprus and has sent us this exclusive report. This is the brutal reality of the division of Cyprus. The scars of conflict still remain. The two halves of the island don't officially recognise each other's existence. It's a diplomatic black hole which has swallowed the case of George Lowe, stabbed to death in the Greek Cypriot south. The two suspects in the case fled to the Turkish Cypriot north and were set free. MP Gareth Johnson has spent the day in talks with the authorities trying to find a way forward. The case of George Lowe's murder and the attempted murder of Ben Barker is nothing short of a national disgrace for the whole of Cyprus. These people responsible are able to so easily put themselves beyond the law and it seems it's politics that's behind it. The island has been divided into the Turkish-controlled north and the Greek Cypriot south since the Turkish invasion after a military coup in 1974 and there's virtually no diplomatic contact between the two sides. The area in between is a buffer zone administered by the United Nations. Here in Nicosia, the capital, it's only around 100 metres or so wide, crossed by a few limited checkpoints. Guarded by soldiers and barbed wire, there are still landmines in places. The abandoned buildings behind me were left as they were at the end of the ceasefire in 1974. The British High Commissioner told Gareth Johnson today they're doing all they can, but it's a complex situation. We continue here in the High Commission to give this case absolute priority. It's the most high profile consular case that we're dealing with. Uh, we keep in close contact with the authorities, including with the police, uh, to follow development. We also travelled through a checkpoint to the Turkish controlled north. Gareth Johnson is currently in the building behind me, meeting with Gunas Onar from the Turkish Cypriot Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The key questions he wants answered are why were the suspects released when the authorities here had them in custody? And most importantly, what will they do in future if they're ever arrested again? Mr Onar declined my request for an interview. What they argue is that they had no evidence coming from the south to hold them on the murder. Uh, and that's something we've heard in the past, but it, you kind of hope that there will be some sort of common sense that would kick in at some stage so that the questions are asked that they can actually move the person from the north to the south. The Greek Cypriot police say they tried to work with a UN-backed tribunal to progress the case, and that hasn't worked either. So far, the situation seems as intractable as ever. Uh, well, Amanda joins us from the resort of Ayanapa in Cyprus. Now, um, Amanda, what more have the, the Cypriot police had to say today? Well, they told me they're unable to comment publicly because it is still a live case. But earlier this evening here in Ayanapa, Gareth Johnson did have a fairly long meeting with the force's chief superintendent and the detectives in charge of the case. Now, they told him they're confident they do have the evidence they would need to try and bring the suspects to court. They feel they've done everything they can in terms of issuing the international arrest warrants, and they say they're deeply frustrated that they haven't been able to bring the case to justice so far, a feeling, I think, that was definitely shared, as you could hear there, by Gareth Johnson earlier this evening as well. Now in terms of broader progress, well I think the Lowe family will be pleased to hear that case from the British High Commission. The police have also pledged to remain in better contact with them. But in terms of the broader issues, in terms of cooperation between the two sides on this or anything else, I think we're still as far away as ever. Amanda, thank you.